recording. We're ready to go. Hey, how are you doing? All right. All right. Woo. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Hey, can you hear our music? You know, Happy New Year. You know what? I got to give Rick credit for this because Rick is the one who taught me how to do this. You do, and you're doing great. I'm so proud of you. Yay. Hey, thank you. Thank hey, you. You know, I good. never, ever would have been able to do this without Rick. So something I am good, just something so good came out of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. It's so That's cool. It. I mean, I'm so thrilled about it. I know. So but, are you, uh, you're using Zoom on your iPad, right? I am on my tablet. Yeah. Got it. My tablet. You look great. My, my eye tablet, <laughs> whatever it's called. So, <laughs> so did you but you know, happy? let's tell everyone we all dress together. Yes, we dress together. We're you know, to just add a little excitement to this <laughs> starting right out of the shoot here, because right. we all dress together. This was the closest color I could come up with just to make sure we matched as much as possible. You did very good, <laughs> very good. So, but you guys said there was some significance to there this, is. Okay, these so shirts. Okay. You, you, so, you know, I'm gonna probably shock you with this here, but we're like comic book geeks. Did you know that about us? That you're what? We're comic book geeks, we're geeks. Oh, I am so surprised. <laughs> so <Shocker>. surprised. Ah. <laughs> so <laughs> these shirts are from, have you ever heard of the uh, comics, The Green Lantern? No. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. no. I'm All right. sorry. Never mind. Green, of course, the Green Lantern. Of course, I've heard of them. Yeah. So, you know, so in the Green Lantern, you know, he wears green. That's his power. Well, there's also other colors in the Green Lantern comics you don't hear about. Blue. This is a blue lantern shirt, and they're the color of hope. Oh, and this is the, this is the purple nice. lantern, and they're the color of love. So oh. we're so we are hope and love today. Oh, that's fabulous. That's <laughs> fabulous. And my color is what? You would be uh, you would also be love. Eggplant. No. Yeah, you, eggplant. I don't know what eggplant. Yeah. Eggplant. The color of eggplant. <laughs> this is not eggplant. This is this is a royal, a kind of royal. a royal blue. Yeah, you're 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 the color of royalty. Royalty. Thank you. Thank you. Right, right. I like that very <laughs> much. So, that's so we got it going on here. We got it going on. Let's no. face it. This is good. This All right, is so good. I've got to ask, did you have a good New Year's? Did you do anything exciting? Oh, are you kidding? Anything exciting? Yeah. No. I mean, <laughs> not at all. We um, New Year's Eve is not really our thing. You know, we would just rather relax and stay in. Actually, come on. 2020. I mean, I know, right? we kind of relaxed and stayed in for just about everything. I think this year, which was fine. It's fine. Normally, every year for us is kind of, you know, so much going on that we really don't care if we stay in or go out or anything. So, um, I think, especially for someone like me, I burn so much energy every day <laughs> for the most part in my normal life that um, I don't mind just crashing every night and not doing much at all. It's just kind of what I do to come down and, and sort of get my energy going again or energy down and straight for the next day because it seems like every day there's so much going on anymore. Right. And um, I know for us, every day we expend energy going out and exercising because that's one of the things we love to do. So we're rarely sitting still anyway. And for us, evenings are kind of one of those things where we always like to just chill. Chill. Not chill. So, and last, last night was kind of, look, look, here's the thing too. Normally, every New Year's Eve, just like last night, they do that review of the year. We didn't want to do a review of the year. <laughs> we barely like, like, no, no one is. We seen. both agreed. Here's all these every channel. Let's do a review of the year. Let's review the year. It was like, are you kidding? <laughs> I'm gonna do no review of review of 2020. Forget it. You know. So although I was gonna ask you though, because we were thinking about this, like 20, because I heard some people talk about like 
2020 was a horrible year. It's going to probably be the worst year ever. But what was this? Was there any like surprise winners for you for 2020? I mean, everybody, everybody's so shading on 2020. Maybe we should maybe stop for a minute and say, well, 2020, let's, let's take a, were there any like, did you have any, like we were trying to think of some prize winners for 2020 or anything that maybe caught us off guard that we, that we found out we liked, we didn't know we liked. I don't know. Is there, is there anything in 2020 for that? Well, personally, I know there was, um, there were a few things. I know for me personally, uh, for example, I had uh, uh, a nephew born. My nephew, who, oh, by the way, you love amazing. this. He's a, uh, he's an astrophysicist who, who works for SpaceX. Right. And he lives in Santa Monica. And he gave birth to a baby boy. So did he give birth to the baby boy, or? <laughs> oh, uh, yes, of course he did. Well, that makes he that's and his a, wife, a pretty miracle. <laughs> he and his wife gave birth to a baby oh, boy. Oh, so his wife had something to do with it. Yeah, yeah. Good. I feel so better. anyway, that was in July. Yeah. And that was, a, of course, a wonderful thing happened. And he designed, by the way, he designed the um, one of the mechanisms on the door for the rocket that went up and um, went to the space station and nice. attached to the space station. Nice. Awesome. So I, we're pretty proud of him. You he's, should be very um, proud of him. Yeah, he's got I mean, an astrophysics PhD from yeah. Columbia. And nice. what was really um, bittersweet about it is his dad, my brother, died of cancer at age 46 oh, man. and years ago. And so he, his, his father would have, at the time his dad died, he was a um, sophomore in high school years oh. ago. So Did he get to the see fact all that, pardon me? He didn't get to see all this, right? So No, his dad, oh no. His yeah. dad passed away in 2000. Got it. And so to know he, oh, to know that his son went to Berkeley for his undergrad and his master's and then went to Columbia and got his PhD in astrophysics and now has a baby boy. See, also see, 2020 is not looking so 2020. Yeah, there's, there's a few bright spots in 2020. You got a new nephew. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And, you're, and you got a, um, a you're, he's, he's done like he's, he's done a, some amazing things. Uh, I love the SpaceX. You know what I love the most about those things, sidebar, is that vertical landing. That to me is just the most amazing thing in the world. Oh, I'm, yes. I, just, I, I wrote about it on my blog before. Yeah, I think that's just, it almost is like it's not real the way that thing comes yeah. down. So, yeah. Well, well you know what's interesting too? This is his wife, by the way, is a PhD in astrophysics as well. This baby's going to be like super smart. Oh, please. And they are, she is, by the way, uh, from France. And so they got married. They actually got married, I believe it was about two years ago, and they got married in France oh, uh, nice. because she, her family is there. So, um, so the whole, his, whole, his whole journey through life that his father hopefully is looking down and has been seen has been just really, really great. And he's a very happy young man. And to me, that is the most important. Hey, there's a good thing. Get, getting married in France is very romantic. Um, oh, no, yeah. very. Very romantic. Very, yes. So that, well, see, there's, okay, so there's a good thing for 2020. That was uh, great. Yeah. For us For us as a family, it was beautiful. Right, yeah. that's a good thing. All right, how about you guys? Well, I know one thing for us that's happened is uh, that, the, you know, we run the tech company, and you were talking about, you know, we've really had a, uh, I almost feel bad about it in a way, but we've done, it's been a good year, you know, for tech people. And so it's been an exciting year for us uh, to see, uh, while there's been some bad things happen, it's brought out a lot of good tech, you know, and we, he and I were talking, Todd, we're talking about this, about some of the, the technology that is done, even on our level, the, the little level, or even like all the way up to, you know, your nephew's SpaceX level. I mean, it's been a, it's been a really good year mm -hmm. for technology. I think we've all, and so for me as a tech person, um, and my company's benefited from that. So we've, we've done that. The other thing I realized about me is that I am more of an introvert. That I, I thought this pandemic would make me crazy, but I have been like totally fine with chilling at home. I mean, like I, I, I thought I'd be climbing the walls, but I've been like, 
oh, I'm, I'm cool. I, I've been surprised that I'm more of an introvert than I thought I was. So I don't know. Uh, that was, that no, was a you know what? I think you've just made a really good point because both Mark and I, who have always had work that has taken us out there and out there and out there and all over, we have been surprisingly just fine yeah. with all this. <laughs> <laughs> not a problem no, and it totally has cool. been, yeah it has been interesting that you say that i mean my entire life has been out there you know one meeting to another to being out speaking to be doing this to be doing that in fact it's been exhausting a lot of times honestly but maybe, this maybe we year, all needed a break <laughs> yeah maybe this year we've been just fine in fact the next column i'm going to publish um there will be some i don't know some changes to it it was actually get this i was actually on deadline on christmas day oh wow and the next day after being up like all night right writing this thing and all this the next day I uh, emailed my publisher and said, oh, you know what? There's some changes I want to make. I promise you I'll get them done real quickly. This is the 26th of December, mind you. I'll get them done real quickly and get them back over to you. Uh, I get this email from him going, oh, don't worry about it. I've had COVID. I oh, haven't no. been feeling great. I'm dragging my butt. And he said, I think we're going to skip January issue and we're going to do a combined January, February. And I was like, oh. but <laughs> worse things have happened to me in my writing career, believe me. Right. So, but anyway, the topic of the column had to do with how much I realized have changed having a year where I was sitting on my butt. <laughs> is, that the name of the, were, is that the name of the, of the good, column? Good. The year of sitting on my butt? Is that what you're going to call it? I don't know. I, I think the, yeah, actually, the title was similar to that. <laughs> the year of it sitting on my butt. The year, what I learned sitting on my butt. <laughs> I like it. It's catchy. Yes. <laughs> like what I learned about myself that was good sitting on my tukas. You know, I mean, it was. <laughs> Like maybe like I learned I'm more of an introvert. You learned some things. Well, that... I learned more about myself, but I learned some ways that I grow. I growed. I learned some ways. Grow, grow. Grow. You grow. <laughs> One of the things you learn is how to not use past tense. I forgot about that, but. I growed so much. I growed. <laughs> I growed. I found, out, I found out I really wasn't a capable writer. I growed. I growed. <laughs> yeah, I really. Love it. <laughs> I did forget how to use tenses, but I growed. <laughs> I no longer knew how to write, know. you know. But yeah, I, I, think, I think many of us really realize that we realize that we could see the world in a different way right yeah yeah definitely. and I think I really learned a lot about how I could see the world that was very different from where I started a year ago you know or yeah here it is January yeah a year ago I know it's a year ago can you believe it so that's just gonna be very interesting so it sounds like you've been thinking the same thing how 2020 what I've learned in 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, a lot of it's good. I think a lot of it's good. I yeah. really do have new perspectives on a lot of things. So, which I think is really important. And another thing I always, I'm always asking people are like, may I give you an idea for another column? And I go, please bring it on, bring it on. You know, do you think everybody thinks that we have ideas just rolling in all the time for columns. Usually I do, but there are months when I'm stumped and I'm going, yeah, really, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And here it is two days from the deadline. Well, I, my sister texted me one time. She goes, uh, do you mind if I give you an idea for a column, you know? <laughs> and I said, no, not at all. I'm sitting here scratching my head thinking, what am I going to do? And she said, how about the idea of a do-over? And I said, a do-over? 
She said, yeah, why can't we do over 2020? And I said, <laughs> you know, you're on to something there. So, so she's like, do it over without the COVID uh, kind yeah, of? Yeah, like you know, can we do over 2020? You know, she says, remember when we were kids and we lost at a basketball game, do over. you know? Right. This We'd say, over. do over, you know, we right. want to do over. And I said, yeah, I said, not a bad idea. How about a do over for 2020? I think so. I think so. Especially if you could like boot COVID out of the picture and see. That's what I wonder. Like, I, I, all during the year, I kept saying, like, in an alternate non COVID reality, I would be doing this. You know, I found myself doing that a lot during the year. Like, in an, another uh, dimension, alternate reality, Rick would and Todd, we would be blah, 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 or whatever. It's, and we found ourselves <laughs> doing that a lot. So, is that kind of like what she's talking about? Like, how 2020, let's do it over, but without COVID. I don't know. I'll have to ask her that because I didn't think about it that way at all. How did you think about it? Huh. I'm going to have to ask her how she thinks about it, how she was thinking about that. Yeah. Because I, <laughs> I kept thinking about schoolyard, you know, being eight years old on the schoolyard, you know, turf with a basketball. Oh, I see. It's a do over, you know, yeah. and the kids are yelling at you, uh uh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, <laughs> no, you, you know. You can't do it over. <laughs> yeah. <Are you> <laughs> Well, I know I wouldn't want to do, I don't think anybody would want to do 2020 over. One of the funniest things I saw, have you seen that um, commercial for Match, the the dating app? No. All right. It's, it's, it, there's been a lot of 2020 shade, but this one was so funny. I, I, had to, I was going to bring it up and see what you thought about it. So it's so, it shows the devil, you know, he's got his big horns as he, and he's on Match looking for a date and he finds this girl. She's like a normal girl. And they meet, like, they show a meeting in the park, and they come outside, and he's just like, oh, you know, he sees you so beautiful. And goes, she goes, she looks at him, she goes, just call me 2020. And then they start going around, him and the, her and the devil, like, they're doing all these things, having 2020, they're stealing all the toilet paper out of the store, they're in a theater that's closed down. And then, then it shows them sitting out in New York, you know, that famous scene overlooking the skyline, and the, there's meteors raining down in New York, and they're going, I wish this year would never end. <laughs> And then the match thing is make 2021 your year to get matched up, you know, but they were like oh, the devil true. and 2020 were dating. And that's why this was year was so horrible. It's, it's a very funny commercial. That is very good. Very <laughs> so good. They're the only people that wish this year would never end. The devil yes. and <laughs> the demon of 2020. But <laughs> That's very good. Oh my gosh. Cute. It was a cute commercial. Oh, oh my gosh, that is very good. Yeah, I've seen some cute things come over my uh, Twitter. Some Happy New Year things that have been very cute come over Twitter. And uh, they've been sent by women, I must say. <laughs> some of them about bad dresses or, oh, it, talking about not going out, things that refer to not going out on New Year's Eve, something to the effect of, Oh my gosh, it's New Year's Eve. I must go put on my best dress. And oh, I have this new dress. And then something to the effect of, oh, what the heck? Let me go put it on. Oh, I'll just flop on the sofa. You know? <laughs> <laughs> did you find it? Speaking of what you wear, did you find in 2020 you wore like the same thing all the time? Like I have like a few few t-shirts I ended up just wearing most because you're around the house all the time so I basically oh, oh you know I have a whole closet full of clothes and I don't think I've worn but <laughs> two pieces you know <laughs> yes yeah yeah nothing but oh I'll just wear that again no really <laughs> you're absolutely right yeah and you know I thought it was just me Thank you for wow. telling me. I thought it was just me. I wore this I'm shirt just... a lot during 2020. It's been like one of my go-to shirts, you know, just hanging out, hanging out here, just because then I've got this stack of t-shirts and I'm wearing, of course I wash them, you know, but I'm like, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure that was clear. We're not, we're washing them in between wearing, but. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. But no, you're, you're so right. In fact, I can't get over it because I go in my closet every day and every day I look and I go, mm, mm, mm. oh, I could wear that today. Oh, no, I'm not going to wear that today. I'll just go back to this. 
And you're right. It's like the same four tops. I don't understand. <laughs> I think everybody's been doing that. Do you? Is that what it is? I think so. We're all doing that. I think. Do you think? Because I'm not necessarily a fashionista or anything, but you seem like you've got really good taste for this mm -hmm. stuff. Do you think? What do you think 2020 is going to impact like fashion and or what what is going to be the clothes trends? Is everybody going to be dressing more comfortable now? You know, or skin tight clothes out? <laughs> because or, well. It's funny you should say that because I have interviewed some for the last column I did. Uh, I did interview some women who are in fashion. I was trying to interview people who have smaller businesses because the point of the column is single minded merchants and people who have small businesses sure. as opposed to ordering from the Amazons of the world right. and giving them all our money. What about the smaller merchants who are slowly dying by the waysides? Yeah. Remember, we were talking about this, we were. the we smaller about businesses. Yeah. And so I interviewed smaller merchants, some online, some bricks and mortar about what are they doing that we can help them with to get by? Well, two of them were fashion oriented. Oh. And one was online fashion and the other was, you know, bricks and mortar fashion. And they actually have come up with some ideas going into 2020, 2021. What are women going to be looking for? Well, it's funny you should ask that because one of them is the trend she's predicting, and it seems to be the case that the trend for women is sweatpants. Really? <laughs> Comfort. 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 And I thought that was really something because personally, I'm not a sweatpants kind of girl or a sweatshirt kind of girl. And I never have been, but so what's happening is there'll be sweatpants, but kind of with a new flair, a new take. So, so it won't you can wear be, out? Yes. Pardon me? Sweatpants you can wear out? Is that what you Sweatpants that you can do things in, yeah. So some that are classic, just swapping around sweatpants or going to a sporting event, sweatpants, but also fashion sweatpants. So you could call them sweatpants, but they're not really, they don't look as much like sweatpants or they don't even look like sweatpants. Well, how, but how do they not look, yeah. do they just bedazzle them or something? Or what are they? Oh, how I, do they... <laughs> you know what? I'm waiting to see what they look like. So yeah, that'd be cool. now that'd be cool. they've started to hit the shelves. They yeah. have because, you know, with fashion, you have to have the scoop and kind of go into the season a little early. But now I have bought from my one girlfriend who has the small online shop. Um, I have bought a couple of different pair from her and um, they, you know, one is kind of, they're both a take on that. One is actually a really cool workout pair okay. and they don't have sweatpants fabric. So they're, they look like a pair of workout pants okay. only with, the fitted uh, uh, ankle and they're really cool looking and they look great on. I mean, they don't, you know, if they, if they look like sweats, I wouldn't wear them. A, I'm not comfortable in sweats working out and B, I am just not a sweats kind of girl. You're not a sweats and girl. Then, I can see that about you. You're not a sweat. No, girl. no. Mm -mm. no, I, I can no if they're not tight, I don't want to. <laughs> and then in the house, <laughs> <laughs> then in the house, I got a pair that are tight. They are a sweatpant fabric, but they are tight. And there's something that I can wear around the house. And there's something that Mark and I can go out in and I can do hikes in and stuff. But there's still a more fitted, tighter sweatpant fabric. But apparently, so I'm looking forward to seeing all the variations that this yeah. new sweatpant sweatpant trend is going to bring. Yeah, that, for that example. makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, given the fact that the people have basically lived in sweatpants for a year, so they probably got attached to them and realized they're comfy, 
Uh, so translating them to an outside kind of thing seems like a good idea. Yes. Yeah, and that is what gave birth to this idea. So we was the fact that speaking speak about, about birth, we, we're talking about maybe a COVID baby boom now. Are you kidding? Oh, they absolutely started planning for that back in March. Yeah, what do you think? You think it's getting you think <laughs> Oh no, I read it. Yeah, it's been it's been uh, eight months. Are, oh are yeah, the furniture, the furniture companies. I was reading about that back in April. Yeah, May. Oh, they were already on top of that. Yep. Yeah. Well, I think there was a- And I thought, I you know, that, of course, that's what their, their marketing people are paid to think about, you know? So, right. oh no, the minute, the minute there was a shutdown from that or started around the country, oh no, they were on it. They started thinking about that back then. I was reading about it. They were like, okay, time to get on the baby furniture <laughs> right now. Here come, here come the babies. Start making that baby furniture, get those new styles started going there. Yeah. I've heard two sides of it though, kind of where you guys would think that I've read that, you know, they expect this baby to boom because people are in together and that's what people do. You know, they make babies. Right. Um, right. And then, um, but then there's this thing that the economy's down. And usually when the economy's down, the baby births go down. People are less likely to have babies during, you know, recessions and stuff like that. So we've got everybody piled in together you know, doing things to make babies, but then there's this fear of the economy. I guess it's the two people are kind of wondering which force is going to win. It looks like the making baby force is going to win, right? Is that the way it's going to go? Yeah, that it is. Sense. Yep. Yep. I mean, it, 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 they're always going to bet on what the facts are because the facts just are not, here's the other thing because and this is of critical importance because it makes no sense of all sense at all in our country what happens even though more people were laid off we had a terrible unemployment problem we also had and i saw this statistics just recently we also had more millionaires made in this country at the same time I, I heard that. How's that yeah. How's that possible? Yeah. What so was... you had all of this problem with people going into a crisis financial situation, and at the same time, you had more millionaires millionaires made than ever. So we, it's a, it was the weirdest time in this country ever, and also so many people got those remember when there was that check that was delivered to people check. that twelve hundred dollar check mm -hmm. at the first part of the covid relief yes, back in march so many people deposited those in their savings so it was given to so many people who didn't need it right and that was the other thing that was just so unexpected, the way it yeah. was given out. So yeah, there were a lot of things that were, you know, right. this year actually lined the pocket of many, many people. Yeah, we were talking about winners, unexpected winners for 2021. Some of them are good, but one of them I read were big corporations. If you look at their cash sheets now, they are flushed with cash. They've, they've actually done better, most of them. I mean, not all of them, obviously. But, right. I mean, you know, the the obvious winners, you know, Amazon, but even like the big box retailers did awesome, you know, the Targets and the Walmarts, you know, because people yes. were there. Yes, they did. Those, those places did great. And a lot of the oh, big yeah. companies were, were doing, uh, really doing amazing during this time right. period. And that, that directly is reported. And th those are held by rich stockholders who are getting more money from that too. So like right. everything else, the wealthy comes out on top, man. They... <laughs> They managed to yeah. kind of make something out of it, so. Yeah, no, it's true. So there was a, it was a bellwether year for many, many, many people, many, many companies. It really was. So it was, you know, that gap between the have and have nots was just widened tremendously this right. year. And so that's where, you know, where the companies who can, can, that's where their marketing and you know their futurist departments 
that's how they look at things, you know? Well, so when it came to figuring out what they could derive from the situation, mm -hmm. that's how they would look. I mean, when you've got people sheltering in their homes, you're going to have more sex and then you're going to have more babies, you what? know? And that's how they looked at it. It's pretty simple. Yeah, really. It makes, it makes you know? sense. Because also another winner during this time has been porn. Porn companies have like busted porn. And the other company that I read has had a big winter year was cannabis. So. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. They did. I mean, I, don't I, I didn't even think about porn, but the cannabis. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah. That, they, yes. They, and of course, even in the. Even in the House, you know, the House of Representatives passed a bill to just make it illegal, right. finally. But the Senate... They won't do it. Oh, gosh, no. Well, we can't do that, you know. <laughs> I think it's possible, though, you might see cannabis. You know, cannabis is still what's a, a Schedule One drug, which is ridiculous, right? It's in the same thing as heroin. And with a Schedule One drug, the government can't allocate money to do studies on it. Now, people can do independent studies, which they've done a lot of. But you know, they can't actually do like government sanctioned studies, but there's a story going around that they might bump it off the schedule one drug, make it a schedule two drug. And that would be that way then federal funds could go for studying it, which could help, you know, back more, more, I guess, more less aggressive laws or whatever. But yeah, cannabis has been a big winner uh, in, in a lot of states voted to, you know, the big the last election, a lot of states voted to oh open. i know yeah all i mean a lot of states. i know from, uh, you know more recreational more medical i guess georgia right. is a medical marijuana state but a right. lot of a lot of like here in the city of atlanta if you it's just a misdemeanor now to get caught with an ounce or less it's like a 75 five dollar fine you know and so a lot of local ordinances have done that so yes cannabis yes. Is winner for no. 2020 go cannabis yes. cannabis and sex <laughs> and rich <laughs> people i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, which, oh my God, it just, it'd be long past due. My goodness, I, I, I don't know if I ever mentioned this be show, before on a show, but when I was up in North Dakota, of course, where I'm from, my family's from, what, at one point we were all, I was meeting with all, you know, the, um, the ladies from this tiny town I'm from, and we were all having, you know, cookies and brownies. Of course, I can't eat anything. I thought you were going to say we're all having cannabis. I was no, <laughs> no, of course not. But that's where this story gets funny. We were all having brownies and cookies and coffee. And and they were talking about how that year, like this was a year, probably a year ago, when they were talking about how legalizing marijuana was on the ballot. They were having an election and um, and I was listening to them, all these ladies talking, and one of their sons, who was at that point in time of legal age, and was asking or telling his mom that he was thinking about voting for to legalize marijuana, and she was <gasps> horrified, of course. <laughs> and anyway, and she was saying, "Don't you dare! Oh my God, that'd be the worst thing!" And on and on. And then all of a sudden, she started talking about. Then they changed the subject to one of the men uh, they know who is a uh, state legislature. This is a state legislature and about how well they know. Everybody knows everybody, okay? North Dakota has, what, 100,000 people in right, it. Right, yeah. You yeah. know, every town is, you know, no more than a couple thousand at the most. My, my hometown is a thousand people. Wow. And they were talking about him and and talking about how he keeps getting speeding tickets and he keeps getting tagged for drunk driving. Not only does he keep getting tickets for drunk driving, he keeps getting thrown in jail for drunk driving. And I'm just like, I didn't say it, but I felt like saying to her, so you're okay having a guy on the streets who is constantly getting thrown in jail for drunk driving, who by the way is an official who keeps getting out of drunk driving and then goes and does his official duties as a representative. But you got a problem with someone smoking marijuana. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Interesting, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's like, 
like the guy behind the wheel who's constantly drunk all the time isn't going to hurt anybody. No, no, but cannabis, oh, that's terrible. Oh, but a joint, oh my. <laughs> but anyway, I thought, that, what, a disconnect, disconnect. I can only imagine, especially <laughs> up there in North Dakota. I keep forgetting that's where you're from. I bet you got some great stories. Not Fargo. Is, every, is everything like Fargo? <laughs> I, I want to think about North Dakota. Everybody who's not from North Dakota, all we think about is Fargo. That's Oh, it's all, uh, Fargo, right? Oh, uh, Fargo. Yeah. That movie? Yeah, the movie <laughs> with the- uh, Oh, I thought that was so hilarious. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> It was I still thing. think about that movie and but the wood chipper. The wood chipper. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that. The I love that. Oh, my. The Listen, Cheryl. the older folk from from North Dakota were are always just like, I don't understand why that movie was so funny. You know, <laughs> <laughs> all of us younger people from there just are like howling, you know. <laughs> Uh, is it is it what it's really like up there though? Is it North Dakota like Fargo or is it just? I mean, well, I don't know how you can ask if it's like Fargo or do you mean the elements of it as far as the the accent and the weather? The accent, yeah, and the, the accent. I know everybody's yeah. not wood chipping everybody. I'm sure that's not going on. You know, but. I mean, it's theater of the absurd, obviously, right, right. but you know, located in far in uh, in North Dakota. You know, like, but know no, they're, um, like... you know, it's a, it's an hysterical movie. <laughs> <laughs> the fact it's that cool. it's, it, you know, supposedly based in North Dakota and the accent right. and, you know, that sort of thing. But no, I thought it was yeah. absolutely, I think I've seen it twice. It's absolutely yeah. hysterical. <laughs> It's one of those movies Marge. that you start to watch, you can't stop watching. You sit down to, oh, Fargo's on, and you sit to watch it, and the next thing you know, you're watching the whole, you're watching the whole movie. The whole, you just can't stop watching. It's really good. So, yeah. Uh, well, so Taryn tells me that we have like five minutes left, by the way. Oh, so, okay. Right. Before we become, uh, Before we get you know, off. billable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're billable. So I, I, did you have any other like winners for 2020 that you thought, because you have a lot of, you know, I know you have a lot of great ideas about this kind of stuff. Did you have any other like winners or surprise winners? I'm sure there was something, but. <laughs> <laughs> that, that blank moment for a minute, like, uh, you know, that's all of it. We've talked about everyone. There's no more. <laughs> well, I, I have to say that, um, one of the best things about 2020, I think for me, is the fact that, you know, I had that uh, driveway exercise class with my girlfriends where right. we decided when there was the original sort of shelter in place that we all started doing with the governor. It was Governor Kemp's decision finally that we shelter in place. And we ladies started the driveway exercise class. There were three of us to start with. And then we added a fourth. And we literally just did a social distancing driveway exercise class where we met at our girlfriend who was the instructor. And we met at her home. And at that time, remember, the shelter in place was you could not go to your neighbor's house. Right. And if you were going to see somebody, it had to be outside and you had to be six feet apart. Right. That was his, his, um, mm -hmm. his rule. That was the shelter in place rule. So that's what we did. And what I did was I printed off his rule, his decree, so to speak. I printed it off and I gave each of the ladies a copy. I gave the homeowner our exercise instructor a copy in case one of the neighbors came over and said you are breaking the shelter in place rule you, you know da, 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 da. i said here's a copy of it mm -hmm. <laughs> and with the rules exactly as stated you know i'm one of those pointy headed people i'm a writer a business writer forever i said here you just say well here's the rule right here in print so the four of us in the driveway starting in march this is how we got together and this is how we really bonded and we've been doing it all year. We haven't stopped. Cool. Now cool. it's winter 
we are now in the garage in four corners right, with four the corners. garage door up. Yeah. We're in gloves, we're in jackets and sweatshirts. And sweatpants. And those cute sweatpants. Cute sweatpants. And <laughs> <laughs> we're, doing, we're doing weights with gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But we're still doing it twice yeah. a week, Tuesdays and great. Thursdays. So that has been fun. That yeah. has been fun. And it really has been a high point because we're not going to the gyms and we don't want to go to the gyms. We all agree that this, and you know what? It's been, a that has been a real high point. Yeah, because that's another good thing. I think a lot of people made some relationships, you know, yeah. I mean, you are solidified some. Uh, you did it. So that's been great. Well, I think it's, I mean, I'm looking forward to 2020, 21, man. I'm all, I'm, I'm ready for it. So I think you are too. I think we yeah. probably got about a minute here, but I did, I, I just wanted to say happy new year and I'm glad we survived. I'm looking forward to more winners in 2021 and your next column coming out. I'm looking forward, yeah, to, I'm that looking forward to that too. Yeah. It sounds like great. You will know. I'll make sure you know. And happy new year to you too, guys. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, this has been fun. Yeah, happy new year. We're going to cut it here and uh, and we'll look forward to the next one. But thanks, Di. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.